Today, I want to answer the question, what was the first hip-hop song? I mean, sure, Cool Herc was a pioneer playing drum breaks, and eventually MCs started hyping up the crowd and rapping over breaks like this. But our goal for today is to find the very first song that can be called hip-hop. And let's just say the rabbit hole goes a lot deeper and a lot earlier than you might expect. Like, a lot. But before we get there, we need to define what we mean by a hip hop song. There are four pillars to hip hop, rapping or MCing, DJing, breakdancing, and graffiti. Graffiti is a visual art form and dancing is physical. And while you can dance to music, it's not required. I just mean, if you take away the DJ and MC and it's just a break dancer or just a graffiti artist, that's not a hip hop song. So that leaves the DJ and the MC. The MC raps over the beat instead of singing. Rapping as a musical device is much older than 1973, but for hip hop music, it's essential. The DJ then is the other half of the equation. DJs like Cool Herc started playing just the drum break on a record, extending it by playing the same break on a second turntable, rewinding the previous one and switching back and forth with a crossfader. We've talked about this on this channel before, but that's the basic idea of the DJ, taking the best part of an existing song and keeping just that part going, making a new song with the MC rhyming on top. And often, these records that DJs would play, they'd be funk records like James Brown. Here's Give It Up or Turn It Loose, and here's also Give It Up or Turn It Loose. Here we go. Rewind this. Here we go. Rewind this one. All day. All day. Of course, the music would continue to evolve from there, but this, what it is at the most basic level, from the earliest point in hip hop, it's rapping over a funky beat. God, I sound so white. I mean, I am, but I hear myself and yuck, you know what I mean? So now that we've defined what a hip hop song is, let's answer the question. What was the first hip hop song? A lot of people point to rappers delight by the Sugar Hill Gang. This was released in September of 1979 and interpolates Good Times by Chic. Interpolation just means the sample has been replayed. In this case, it's live musicians playing throughout the track with Wonder Mike, Big Bank Hank, and Master G rapping on top. We got rapping. I said a hip, the hip, the hip, 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 you don't stop. We got a beat. Got the bass. Put them together. I'm rapping to the beat. Yeah, you are. By the way, here on YouTube, I have to keep these musical examples insanely short, but you can watch the extended edit as a member of the Diggin' the Greats Patreon. Oh, that reminds me, next week, April 17th, I'm doing a free live stream giveaway on Patreon. I'll be DJing, hanging out, and giving away some records and merch. All you have to do is join the DTG Patreon on any tier, free included. There's a link in the description, or you can head to patreon.com slash diggingthegreats. So Rapper's Delight was the first hip hop song on the radio and the first hip hop song in the top 40. But is it the first true hip hop song? Now, again, we have to define what we're looking for as the first recorded hip hop song, since I'm sure there were songs that were performed live before this that were never recorded and therefore impossible to evaluate. But even as far as recordings go, no, this is not quite the first hip hop song. There are plenty of forerunners to what would come to be known as hip hop. People like Gil Scott Heron are commonly brought up in the conversation. And while songs like The Revolution Will Not Be Televised from 1971 have some of the elements in there, is it hip hop? You will not be able to plug in, turn on, and cop out. All right, we gotta keep moving. That's a funky beat, but is he rapping? 
Oh, so white. Like, jeez, man. He's not singing, but his delivery feels more like poetry than rapping, which they're very close. And yes, other works like the debut self-titled album by The Last Poets in 1970, they're often brought up in this conversation as well. But these are both more of a forerunner to hip hop. But is there something between these and Rapper's Delight? In March of 1979, just before the release of Rapper's Delight, the Fatback Band released the song King Tim the Third, parentheses personality jock. The decision to have a rapper on this song wasn't a big deal, they just thought it would be a fun addition. As drummer Bill Curtis said, And I said, Jerry, I'm looking over this album we're doing, I would think it was a Fatback 7 album. I said, man, I don't hear, I don't smell no hit. I don't smell nothing. It ain't, it ain't right, it just don't feel right. He said, what, what you hear? What, that's, that's the first thing he gonna ask me. What do you hear? What you wanna do? What you think it go? I said, I don't know. And then all of a sudden I said, let's do a rap, man. He said, do a rap? Hell, we can't even talk. <laughs> he said, Bill, I don't know about the band rap, but happened that one of the roadies was in the studio with us. And he said, hey man, I got a buddy that lives up there in the projects and he's a great rapper. I said, can he rap? He said, yeah, man. And he said, I said, Brandon Mann. He said, I said, Brandon Mann tomorrow night. And he brought in Timothy Washington. And I had the track already laid out, finished everything. I flew him in on the trap. I said, hey man, go in there and start rapping. And he just started rapping. Again, hip hop music existed before this and Bill Curtis had heard it live at parties, which is what inspired him to make this record. But this right here, this is the first recording of a song that can be called hip hop. Now, this is the first recorded hip hop song, but really, even King Tim the Third is kind of on the fence. Like, yes, it's the first record pairing rapping with a funky beat, but there's also singing on it, and this is really more of a funk song by the Fatback Band that they added rapping to and they didn't normally do. It's very important in the evolution of the genre though, because as we've already seen, funk music is what hip hop was built on. And other Fatback Band songs have been sampled hundreds of times. So there's our answer. The first recorded hip hop song is King Tim the Third, which is basically a funk song with rapping on it. Okay, but we found the answer and there's still so much time left in the video. I guess all this talk about funk has me asking another question and since I got time... People often point to James Brown's song, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, as the first funk song. This song is from 1965, it's classic James Brown, but I'm gonna say Cold Sweat from 1967 is the first true funk song. Here's why. Papa's Got a Brand New Bag is built around a blues progression. Cold Sweat is built around one single chord. So much space in this, so much space. Papa's Got a Brand New Bag is funky, but it follows a blues structure. Cold Sweat actually came out of another James Brown song, I Don't Care from 1962, but that song is less funky and mostly follows a blues structure. Cold Sweat throws that out the window, keeping one chord and focusing on that funk groove. This would eventually become standard for James Brown and funk in general. That's why I think it's the first true funk song. It's evolving past blues and into something new. Initially, not a lot of people got it or liked it because it was so different. This is another evolutionary step in music, moving from blues and R&B into funk, which would go on to evolve into hip hop. That idea of very few chords focusing on the groove, that can be heard on King Tim the Third and Rapper's Delight as well. But Cold Sweat had one other major influence, jazz. As arranger and co-composer of this song, Pee Wee Ellis explained, after one of the shows, one night somewhere, James called me into the dressing room and grunted a bass line of a rhythmic thing, which turned out to be Cold Sweat. 
I was very much influenced by Miles Davis and had been listening to So What six or seven years earlier, and that crept into the making of Cold Sweat. You could call it subliminal, but the horn line is based on Miles Davis's So What. Listen for the horns. Here's the horns on So What, right? Here's the horns on Cold Sweat. The horn line is similar, as is the active bass line. Cold Sweat is in the key of D, so what is in D minor, or D Dorian for all you modal freaks out there. You know, if I separate those two hits out, I could theoretically Just like how King Tim the Third was the first hip hop song, but also a funk song with rapping on it, the first true funk song, Cold Sweat, is this blues R&B thing with elements lifted directly from one of the most famous jazz albums of all time. So hip hop came out of funk and funk came out of blues by way of jazz, but let me see how much time I got. All right, cool, I'm fine. Cause now I'm curious, what was the first jazz song? The song we just looked at, So What, that's from the Miles Davis album Kind of Blue, which is one of the most famous jazz albums of all time. And it was such a big deal because it was much more relaxed with a lot more space. Now, jazz has its own huge history with many subgenres, but the first song that can be considered jazz, the first recorded song, that's Livery Staple Blues by the original Dixieland Jazz Band from 1917. Actually, at that point in 1917, they were called the original Dixieland Jazz Band and changed the spelling later as the term became standard. <laughs> The form of this song is a blues, the same form that James Brown was leaving behind with Cold Sweat and Miles Davis with So What. This recording is considered the first jazz record, or the first jazz record. Dixieland jazz is a specific subgenre of jazz, fusing West African rhythms as well as blues, ragtime, and marches. There are also brand new elements like improvisation. But this song, Livery Stable Blues, or Livery Stable Blues, there's two major caveats with it. One is that this may be the first jazz recording, but it's surely not the first jazz song. The other caveat is that the members of the original Dixieland jazz band were white. Ah, jeez. This is important to note because jazz was created by black people, and there are many more black pioneers of jazz. Just like how when we looked at the first hip hop song, there were definitely songs that were being performed live, and the Fatback Band song was the first hip hop song to enter recorded music history. Same thing with this first jazz song. One early jazz or jazz pioneer was Buddy Bolden. He was known as King Bolden and was most active in the early 1900s. He is credited with fusing ragtime with blues and gospel, giving the whole thing a more relaxed and improvised feel. There is no known recording of Buddy Bolden, but here's a recording of the Buddy Bolden Legacy Band. The song is Buddy Bolden Blues, which was also known as Funky Butt, which honestly, that's a pretty cool name for a song. Oh, that clarinet. Now we're talking. This is one of the earliest jazz songs, so early that that term jazz or even jazz weren't even used yet, even though this can definitely be called jazz. But I mean, how far back do you want to keep going? Because the origins of jazz date back much farther than even the early 1900s. All right, let's keep going. So before it was a state, the French controlled Louisiana territory had Le Code Noir, a strict set of rules about how to treat slaves, including in some areas, barring slave owners from making their slaves work on Sundays and Catholic holidays. How nice of them to give Catholic holidays off. So around 1820, enslaved Africans would gather in Congo Square in New Orleans and play music. Congo Square was a melting pot of music, mixing West African music with Caribbean music, eventually going on to incorporate blues, marching music through the Civil War, 
hymns, field chants, and ultimately being played on European instruments with harmonic influence from Europe as well. This is, of course, long before music could be recorded, but this one day off a week for enslaved Africans, this was not the norm throughout the South. This is where the musical genres mixed, eventually becoming the genre we now know as jazz, leading to Buddy Bolden, the original Dixieland jazz band, Miles Davis, James Brown, Fatback Band, and hip hop. I'm checking the progress bar down there. I still got more time and you're still watching. All right, let's keep going back and see how much farther we can go. So if jazz came about as a mix of West African rhythms and European instruments, let's pick a path. Uh, which one should we go with? If Congo Square was a mix of music, including that made by enslaved people from West African countries, let's look for music directly from West Africa. So in 1819, around the same time Congo Square was starting, T.E. Bowditch documented the music and instruments of the Ashanti people in Ghana. In Mission from Cape Coast Castle to Ashanti, he notes, the flute is made of a long hollow reed and has not more than three holes. The tone is low at all times, and when they play in concert, they graduate them with such nicety as to produce the common chords. They got flutes! Okay, what else? The rest of the instruments can hardly be called musical and consist of drums, castanets, gong gongs, flat sticks, rattles, and even old brass pans. All right, dude, calm down. The drums are hollowed out trunks of trees, frequently carved with much nicety, mostly open at one end and of many sizes. Those with heads of common skin, that is if any other than leopard skin, are beaten with sticks. This is the documentation of an Englishman discovering groove for the first time, apparently. Like, I know I'm white, but come on, dude. So this is about as far back as I can go in books. It's all oral tradition before this. Well, oral traditions and rock paintings. Like, this is a rock painting found near Lake Chad. This is one of the oldest pieces of evidence of music and dance in Africa. There's no written music, but the way the people depicted in the paintings are positioned, it's similar to dance styles from the area. This dates back to the Neolithic era, specifically around 4000 to 6000 BC. But wait, we got music, we got dance, we got rock paintings? Sounds an awful lot like the four pillars of hip hop we started with, the DJ, MC, breakdancing, and graffiti. It's like we've gone so far back that we're looping around again. But look, that's as far back as we can go, all right? That's like 8,000 years ago. Let me do my wrap up and let's get out of here. Okay, music has been around for a very long time. It's one of the most human things we have, beginning with the human voice. But okay, so how much time do we have left now? Because now I'm curious, like separate from the human voice, what was the first musical instrument? All right, so earlier when we were talking about jazz, we had to decide whether to talk about African rhythms or European instruments. So now let's talk about Europe. Europeans appear in the fossil record around 48,000 years ago, but that's Homo sapiens, what you and I are. Homo erectus migrated from Africa to Europe before modern humans. In 1995, this thing was discovered in a cave in what is modern day Slovenia. It's made of the bone of a bear, and initially scientists thought it was nothing, and then they realized, wait, it's got a beveled edge, it's got a couple holes, this thing's a flute. They got flutes too! And when they dated it, they figured out that this, this bone flute, was made by Neanderthals 60,000 years ago. This is officially the oldest musical instrument in the world, but you wanna hear something crazy? Scientists reconstructed this Neanderthal flute and figured out how to play it. Are you ready for this? This is 100% real. Here is a video of a woman playing the oldest musical instrument in the world. Just humor me for a second. This is 100% real, I promise you. I have not repitched 
anything. So here are the two notes from the Neanderthal flute, right? You just saw the video of that woman playing those notes, right? All right, we'll check this out. Wait, 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 wait. Cold sweat, cold sweat, cold sweat. Come on, are you kidding me? 60,000 years ago, a Neanderthal, a species of archaic humans, decided, yeah, the human voice is cool and all, and Gronk, I love what you're doing with that drum, my man, but hear me out. What if we supplement both of these things with this little two-note motif I got on my bone flute? Hear me out, it just might stick around for thousands of years. European music continues to evolve. We get into written history with medieval, renaissance, baroque, etc. The instruments, they get a little more complex. We get things like pianos, clarinets, trombones. The cornet is invented around 1820 in France. Same time Congo Square is starting up. It makes its way from France to Louisiana. Cornet, by the way, was the instrument of choice for Buddy Bolden. So in into jazz, into funk, and back into hip hop where this whole quest started. How much time do I have left now? Okay, last thing, live stream giveaway on April 17th on Patreon, come say what's up, link in description. I normally have a video to point to at the end of this one, but what should I, I mean, I'm running out of time. Uh, uh, I guess I'll just see you on the next one.